If you're a DIYer or even a professional plasterer, you might find today's video quite interesting because it's all about a clever little tool that hasn't been around for that long, but which has made the process of getting a wall flat, removing the trail marks, much easier than it was before. Right, I'm standing here with Gerard today in the master bedroom, which I'm in the middle of refurbishing. You'll see a few videos over the next few weeks on this particular refurbishment project. But right now we've got something quite interesting to show you. You may have seen a video that Gerard did a couple of years ago now yeah. on the spare room, which sets out a sort of general guide to DIYers on how to achieve a professional finished plastering. But Gerard has got a new innovation, which I thought I would do a discreet video on today, uh, because I think it might be quite interesting for those of you out there who are constantly trying to introduce new ideas into what you do to make your plastering as easy as possible. Over to you, Gerard, what have we got? We have got a, a Marshalltown um, sponge float, and it's a, a new system. I've already done the, the first trial. I've, I've put laying on uh, coat on, laying down coat. I've done my first trial. Uh, and th this is a way of getting the wall flatter, especially for a DIYer as well. So all you do, <coughs> splash a little bit of water on there. There's a few trowel marks in there. So yeah, so this is your second trowel. Yeah, but I'm using like, a bit of, cause I'm a traditional plaster, 27 years plastering. Can we zoom in? Th there's, there's a lot of people, yeah. a lot of um, on-site plasters that are you're doing this method now and using Superflex trowel. So I'm trying their method. So this is the second trial, but uh, there's a few trial marks in there. Splash a little bit of water on, and then just go over it like that. It gets it gets the wall flatter. So it looks like you've taken that nice flat finish you got after the first trial, and you're sort of putting an Artex type effect on it with this rubber float. Yeah, yeah, that's all. But use it, I found using the sponge, uh, it, gets the, it gets the grain up a bit uh, and it gets the air into it, makes it go off quicker, the yeah, plaster. Yeah, but it, it's, um, it's better for a DIY, I reckon, as well. Because it enables because you to get a much flatter, flatter, yeah, uh, flatter right. finish. Yeah, so you got, you got, especially across the bead as well, there, yeah. along there. So you got a bit of a trial mark there. All you do, run the sponge float along like that. Uh, and it gets it flatter. It gets all the trial marks out. Yeah. And then just happens it back up, makes it go off a bit quicker, gets the air into it. Yeah. Makes it go off quicker. When you've done it a couple of times, this system, you get into it then. Yeah, because you've literally only just started doing this. Yeah, you? well, on this job really. I've done it, yeah. I've done it on one job before, but the this is the first time really. Yeah, yeah. So and I always find it, it's, a, it's a lot better. I never thought it would. I've been plastering for 27 years and I thought there's no way I'm going to be converted to do yeah. this. Well, good on you for embracing your ideas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like rendering really. Yeah, that's true actually, isn't it? Yeah. But you'd use a float for rendering rather than a sponge. Yeah, that's, you, that's right. Well, the thing is, if you're drawing, you can, you've got, um, there's a floated finish and there's a yeah. sponge finish. Yeah, what you do, you, you, you rub it up with, if it was rendering, you, you'd rub it up with a float, yeah. wait for it to go off, and then, then, you, then you rub it up with a, a sponge and right. you get a flatter finish again, just like this. Right, okay. So, yeah, it's very similar. See them trial marks? Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Little, tiny, only a tiny little bit of water. Right, and it's gone, eight. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, it's, get, it's getting the wall flatter as well. Yeah. So the next, my next investment is a Superflex trowel. Yeah, you mentioned this. Do you want to explain what that does? Um, it's only it's only for um, the finishing trowel. So after after this, you use a Superflex trowel, which is very it's very thin gauge steel. Yeah. And it's only for the, the final trowel. So, but it's supposed to get it a lot flatter. I've yet to use that. So yeah, because you can't use that for the laying down coat or for the second No, because you wall it all over the shop. There's, there's too much flex in the steel. Yeah, gotcha. If you use that for laying on laying down coat, your you, you wall would be all over the place, yeah, only for a final trial. Do now, it. a lot of people, when you did your last video, which has been really well received, it's got yeah. over 100,000 views yeah. now, a, a lot of people, I suppose particularly the younger plasterers, were saying, oh, why isn't he using a speed skim? Oh, he's, you know, he's taking far too much time. What would you say about speed skims? 
Because you've had a go with those. Yeah, I've had, I've had a go with the speed skim. They're all right. If you've got a perfectly flat ceiling, they're brilliant. But look like on these old places, yeah. if you've got a 1200 or a 600 blade, yeah. and you've got a great big ump in the ceiling, all you're going to catch is the eye spot. Yeah. So no good. So speed skimming, is that the really wide trousers then? Yeah, 600 or, yeah. or 1200. Yeah. yeah. You see, those, so those are only really for new builds, effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, right, or where right. you've battened a new wall. Because actually, this, this wall in here, I've battened and covered that with insulated plasterboard but the ceiling which will be on my next video which we've had to reboard and just look what a mess it was in before with wood chip and a sort of cardboardy type material that we just couldn't strip off below a lot of our ceilings we've actually got Gerard just to skim straight onto but I couldn't hear particularly with these nails sort of projecting down the way they were the ceiling is literally all over the place so you'd never have been able to do that with a wide trowel, would you, Gerard? No, that's right, yeah. So how long are we going to let that go off for now, Gerard? Um, I'll probably go off about a quarter of an hour. Yeah, and then we give it the final... The final trial, yeah, final that's trial. Right. I'll cross trial it. Yeah, well, we'll just yeah. show you that, we'll show that in a minute. We'll let this go off for 15 minutes, okay. maybe make a cup of tea. Yeah, most important, keep me lubricated. That's it. Yeah. So the water, so you, you're you constantly using your paintbrush to sort of... Yeah, to, just to, stra water yeah to, to, to straighten the line up because... Uh, is that to stop it going off or is it to Yeah, stop it from going off, yeah, just get right. the fat the back up as well. Yeah. See, so it's just gone off a little bit there. The fat going, what do you mean by to get the fat going back up? Um, when, when it sucks in, if it sucks in, <coughs> because it, uh, it hasn't gone off properly, it yeah. suck, it started drying but it hasn't gone off properly. Yeah. You right. put a bit of water, it, it, yeah. it, come, it brings it back up again. Right, okay. To the, to the stage of everything else. And that's quite important, is it? Yeah. Just from the point of view of trialing it. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yeah. What happens if you don't do that? If you don't uh, splash it with water as your as your as your Well, you, you, won't, you won't get straight lines. You won't get straight lines. Yeah, because you, you'll, get, you'll get little lumps of plaster. Yeah, which have gone off. Gone off, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, I see. I think yeah. that happened to me once when I was doing it. Yeah, that's right, that's yeah. Right. That, that's, that's all part of the learning process, ah, isn't it? Ah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, so you just learn that. And if you uh, plaster in the ceiling, it's starting to go off, and you're going to re-skim a wall. If all the internal angles, if they're if they're dry, it's going to suck the plaster, and you get lumpy, bumpy angles. You don't right. get you, get, you don't get nice straight angles. Yeah. So what you do, get it before you plaster, wherever it's dry, wet it down yeah. to stop the suction, slow it down a bit. Right. Okay. See, that's starting to go off a bit. That is. See, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. So, and that, that's that how quick it goes off. Yeah. By just using a sponge, see? Yeah. The air gets into it. See that, just doing a cross trial. Yeah. So you're not going to wait 15 minutes now, are you? No, it's just it's starting, to, it's starting to go off, that is already. Yeah. See that, you, 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 the difference? Um, you you, you want to see any trial marks here, look at this. Yeah. See that? I'll just go once up, down, and, it, and that's, that's flat. Wow. Whereas if you hadn't used a sponge, you'd be doing that for quite a while. Now, yeah, that's right. For, for ages, trying yeah. to, get it, to get it right. But with the Superflex as well, because it's quite a stiff blade on, on the Marshall Town. With the Superflex, yeah. it's, uh, it's more flexible. So you think that's going to be even easier? Right? Yeah, it'll be even easier. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So anyone out there who's using a Superflex, let us know in the comment section below what you think of it. Gerard is a traditional plaster of 27 years, so he's quite keen to uh, to get the lowdown on what what, yeah. what you think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a little, tiny little bit of water. It's cross trial. Yeah. So for us DIYs out there, remember that. Yeah. You want to keep putting the water on because you don't want the plaster to go off. Yeah. Whilst you. But not too much water. But not too much. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, just, a whole lot will come off. Yeah. It's all down to experience, really, yeah. at the end of the day. See that? Yeah. 
dust the, the last bit of the sponge marks. See how quick that is? Flat as yeah, yeah. I say flat as a pancake. Uh, yeah. That's a very good analogy. Uh, no, no. And let's have a look at this wall over here. So this is the wall that Gerald did with the sponge. That's, yeah, that was the first one. The other day. And look at that. I mean, <laughs> it's just uh, totally. Uh, and bearing in mind, this is a wall that I reboarded over lath and plaster. So it's not even a brand new battened wall. And you can see how flat it's got that. Happy days. Yeah. I wish they'd done it years ago now when, it, when they first started this. Well, how long have they been around for? I, I reckon that they've been doing this. Uh, not the same speed, the speed scheme, super flex. They've, they've been doing it for about five years now. Right, right. Yeah, so right. behind times. It's just getting it into your, into your head to, to, to start, start a new uh, system. And you think to yourself, no, no, I'm just going to stick to what I know. But it's proved me wrong. Sometimes some of the old systems are good, but like this, to me, it's a hundred times better. It's easier as well, just rub it up with a sponge. So I say again? Yeah, I just use an inch brush to yep. clean all my angles up. That's it, nice and clean. Bristle? Yeah. Good quality, well, good, pretty good quality. It's yeah, uh, pure Paris, Paris, right. yeah. Paris, yeah. Yeah, which isn't too bad. So that's it for today's video. A couple of days later, the room is drying out nicely and all ready for the mist coat once we've decided what colour we're going to paint it. It's worth pointing out that Marshall Town do a coarse and a fine cell rubber float, which obviously relates to the density, the, uh, the size of the uh, holes in the rubber. Uh, or the sponge as it looks like. Gerard in this video used a coarse cell rubber float. Seems to work pretty well for him for plastering applications like this. Details of the tools that I've used in today's video will be in the description at the end of this video, which on a mobile phone you can access by clicking on the arrow to the right of the video title and on a computer, click on the show more button. I will be posting a couple more videos in the next few weeks. One in particular showing how I battened and insulated the wall that you saw earlier on, because I think that might be quite useful. And as I said earlier on, let me know in the comment section below if you've got one of these rubber floats and if you're already using the Superflex trowel. So I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please click on the like button below. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.